We've, as, as Caroline said, we've been incredibly lucky um, to have had over the years so much um, time from organizations who've been through the process of applying, of running projects, reporting projects as well, and moving um, through project to project through their organization's development. Uh, and it's been a real privilege uh, to see that happen and to see how that happens. So um, NIE, for example, I got to know when I started uh, doing this nine years ago, I think, or so, and, and really seeing that evolution um, through organizations is what's made it more fascinating. It's tempting to look at these um, stories as project by project, but the real value, I think, is looking at where the project lives within an organizational development and history and, um, and travel. And that is really where I'd encourage everyone to think about it. And when the question is, where do we find the match funding? My answer to that is always, well, it should be part of what you want to do and are planning on doing, where you take the Lego blocks of your next two, three years worth of activities and you build those into your cooperation project. Um, because it makes way more sense than creating a standalone cooperation project that sort of lives parallel to your organizational life, activity, uh, mission, and purpose. And when you can combine this, it just works for everyone. And I think what you were mentioning about um, making sure that organizations share this kind of purpose within their own organizations, it makes it so much more valuable. So where the comms colleague is totally on board and they know why COAL are there and the understanding is of the Norwegian partners doing that and sharing out these kinds of uh, responsibilities and making sure that everyone's mission is part of it. Um, right, the way it works, um, the timeline, um, this, is, this is a very mixed up and, and, and sort of put together timeline. It does take um, the time for you to develop your partnership to find your partners, to separate the good, the bad from the ugly uh, in terms of your partnerships, and really, as, um, as the speakers today have said, taking the time to really get to grips with not just what the project wants to do, so what the voice of the partnership is, so a unified voice of the partnership, but also understanding what lies behind the motivation of every single partner. Why are they in it? What is in it for that partner and what is that really motivates uh, the Norwegians um, as part of this. So you submit an application, it's a ready-to-go project where everything has been costed, where every budget line has been explained, where you explain what the three, four workshops will lead to and what impacts they will have in the overall scheme of the cooperation project. Um, the results are then published in uh, late spring, summer, that depends on when the deadline is, of next year. At the beginning of the project, typically you get um, most of the grant up front. That depends on the size of the lead partner and um, the what is called financial capacity of the lead partner. So if you are of sound financial capacity, you will get the majority of the funding at the beginning of the project. And as a lead partner, you can then cascade that money uh, those grants down to, to the other partners and you and the partners decide on the schedule of how that works. Um, every October the executive agency, and here's a new word, um, organizes what is called the kickoff meeting. The executive agency um, is a part of the commission and they're the ones who administer the funding and administer the grants. Uh, we don't do that. Creative Europe Desk UK colleagues, we are the lucky ones. We don't have to deal with uh, writing out the grant agreements or supervising uh, the projects. We are the um, critical friends, impartial observers, and cheerleaders um, for organizations who are beginning to think, putting in applications, running projects, and then uh, living through the legacy of their projects. So this is all run by the executive agency in Brussels. Um, Projects can run for up to four years, and as you've heard, at the end of the project, you submit uh, a report, which is mostly financial. This is how we spend all of the money. Um, that is how we got our match funding is in, and look, it matches perfectly with what was initially submitted at the beginning of the project. And you can change the budget over the, uh, over the cycle of the project as well. 
this is a little bit more for the advanced applicant, um, and there is lots of new language to learn, and Julia uh, and I and the rest of the team are there to help guide you through this new language. Um, match funding, very important. Uh, Shole was spot on. You can absolutely use staff time as part of your partnership contribution to the project, but it needs to be real staff time. So it needs to be um, monetizable in terms of someone's job description and hours spent and time sheets. So you can say, right, uh, producer X spends three days of her working week uh, on project um, Y, and this is how it works. Um, what you cannot use um, are what we usually called in-kind contributions. So volunteer time, for example, you cannot use because it cannot be cash flowed through an accounting system. It, money needs to be seen to be changing hands. You need to be able to follow income and expenditure through its life across bank accounts and through accounting systems. This is the only way for the agency to see whether something has actually happened in practice. Remember, they are doing monitoring on behalf of many, many countries taxpayers who need to know how money is spent and also how money is spent against match funding. So they need to be able to uh, assess from quite a distance and sometimes with several years uh, uh, in, later to see how something happened. And the easiest way for them to see is to be able to see is has cash changed hands? Was something delivered? Uh, were these people paid? And did the artists um, actually travel. So this is a really important part of it. It doesn't need to be difficult, it doesn't need to be long, but um, as Shola and Sarah said, you do need to be prepared and well organized. And this is why um, it is very good to go in with um, determination, resilience, and um, good preparation as well, and with some excellent advice from us and uh, Sarah Shole and the other cohort of organizations who have been through this. So this is why we put um, people like Sarah and Shole to the front of these kinds of events, um, because it's way better hearing it from them from, than, from, uh, than from us. Um, very quickly, this is the scorecard against which application is assessed, and you'll see this kind of mirrors what um, Sarah and Shole were talking about. Um, relevance. Is your project relevant to the create of your program? Is, is this just someone's project, something they want to do, or is this actually a project that responds to the aims and the ambitions of Creative Europe? Does this project speak Creative Europe? Um, quality of the content and activities is how well will this project be run? Are the people who are running this really good? Are they able? Are they prepared? Do they have a history? Do the organizations running this have a history? Are they brilliant? Um, Communication and dissemination, two separate things. How will you promote the project, what the project is doing, the festivals that are happening, the capacity building workshops? Will you be tweeting? Are you going to have um, knowledge sharing conferences? How are you going to get the message out there? And this kind of runs into dissemination. Dissemination is much more about how are you going to share the impacts and the knowledge and the insights gained. Are you going to keep it within your little group or bigger group of partners, or are you going to share it out through associate partners, through European networks, through universities, through uh, arts councils, um, development agencies? And quality of the partnership is how tight of a ship are you running as a partnership? So you were talking about distributed leadership, who is responsible for what? Um, is the partner in Slovenia mainly on the comms, the other partner in Finland looking more after the residency side of things? Um, who is leading on advocacy as part of the project? And this is where you plan out who does what and who is responsible for what. Not every partner needs to do the exact same as every other partner. Indeed, it may be more effective and useful for you to distribute uh, roles and tasks. We have plenty more advice like this on the website, at our events. Follow us on Twitter. We have a feedback form that we will be handing out at the end. Please um, let us know what you think of today in that feedback form. Um, some advice on how to find partners. Join a European network. 
Um, some of these are very accessible, very easy to join in. Um, some, because they, many of them receive Creative Europe um, <clears throat> support, they will have subsidized membership fees as well. <clears throat> um, you can find partners by scrolling through our website. Um, we have every single project that's been funded and that has UK partners in it on our website and you can find who those UK organizations have partnered with. Most of these projects have their own website and this reads as a kind of a who's who who's who list of organizations who've done it, who've been through it, who have the insight and who have the expertise and who have uh, European ambitions um, and histories. So, how do we help and what can we do for you? Um, over the next couple of months, we will be running, as Julia said, idea development workshops. This is for you to, um, in, a, in a workshop environment with us, but also with support from um, people like Sholey um, and Sarah, um, facilitating how what you want to do as an organization meets what you want to do as a partnership, meets what the program is aiming to do. So it helps you align strategies, ideas, and uh, is extremely useful in helping you build the rationale around a cooperation project. And have we mentioned that UK-led applications have twice the European average success rate? Um, <clears throat> but it is also really useful for those organizations and for UK partners who are partners in someone else's cooperation project um, not someone else's cooperation project, a project led by another organization. It'll still be yours. Um, but it really helps contribute even better uh, to the lead partner at the application stage. We will, if you give us sufficient notice, feedback on drafts. If you have a one-pager of an idea at this stage, we can give you some feedback on that compelling one pager further along the application process. If you would like us to check section C6, which is the detailed, no, 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 the short project description, and that is in essence the elevator pitch where you have 5,000 characters to pitch the project in a short paragraph. Um, this is vital for you to get right, and that's something that is very easy for us to feedback on. Um, but also the detailed project description, which is way longer. Um, have we mentioned our award-winning website, which has case studies, uh, a section on how to find partners, and, as we said, um, previously funded projects. Um, I also promised some of you, um, did we mention also that we will be gathering at the pub two minutes down the road, if that much, uh, for a drink later on? It's just next door. Um, so if you want to uh, chat uh, over a refreshing beverage uh, in an air-conditioned environment, do join us there. We can also talk exciting things like Brexit. Um, the next Creative Europe program is being built at the moment. Uh, as Julia said, these programs come in seven-year cycles. Um, and also, as we've mentioned, uh, you do not need to be a EU member state to be part of the next um, of, of Creative Europe or indeed the next Creative Europe program. Um, the Commission has at this stage um, proposed a 30% budget increase for the next Creative Europe program and the European Parliament proposed a 100% increase on the next Creative Europe program's budget. Um, this is good, this is interesting um, and bearing in mind the UK's uh, track record, not just in leading projects, but even being involved in uh, the program, it would be surely no bad thing to continue being part of that program. Um, make sure you talk about this if this is something you're interested in. Um, the next program, as I mentioned, has a increased budget, but it also has refreshed priorities, and I'm going to read off my notes um, here. Um, there is a new focus um, it won't be wildly different from the current program, but a new focus on societal resilience, social inclusion, cultural participation, um, the strengthening of European identity and the role of culture in external relations and cultural diplomacy. Um, mobility of artists, I mentioned before, iProtunus, the artist mobility scheme, that is very likely to be part of uh, the next program. 
so an individual artist mobility program. There will also be a a sector-specific focus in the areas of music. So I mentioned Music Moves Europe already, again, preparatory actions, pilots happening now already. That is all to test the waters and to see how things might work in a bigger next program. Um, the focus on the book and publishing sector and architecture and cultural heritage. So it's responds in our analysis very well to UK sector needs, but also UK expertise. Some of these areas we are really good at. So um, diversity and inclusion, innovation, cultural diplomacy, some of the things that in the UK um, have been done quite well and where the UK can still contri contribute in a meaningful way um, to the program. There's a bigger budget more focus on mobility and circulation of people and works. Um, so let's talk about the next program as well. Any questions here? Because we will be wrapping up. Hi. Hi. You keep mentioning diversity, yeah. you know, cultural. Um, I, I grew up in England and everything. So when you mean bringing in cultural diversity, would that include so f something like my culture from the ethnic minority culture? Because I haven't seen that being done. And will the rest of Europe accept it? Yeah. Um, it's a broad term under uh, Creative Europe. Cultural diversity also uh, talks about the diversity of cultures in Europe and across Europe, coming in, going out. Uh, so it's a very broad term and is um, open to a number of interpretations. So absolutely yes, and there are quite a few projects that tackle what you're mentioning um, as a theme in cooperation projects. So yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, have a look through um, some of the projects that have been supported uh, by Creative Europe in the past. Absolutely. Hi there. Um, I'm just wondering how it would work for uh, initiating an application if you're not a lead, if you're not a lead partner, but perhaps one of a smaller partner with a specific role yeah. with the intention of bringing in larger partners. Can you do it that way or can you only initiate if you're a leader? Um, why don't I ask my two fellow panelists up to the panel and discuss this as a group because this is a bigger question and a really good one. Absolutely.